not just representing yourself, you represent New York. Who's a New Yorker? What makes you a New Yorker? All walks of life come to live in the city of New York. You carry the city on your shoulders and everyone has high expectations from you. Are you ready for that and can you handle it? Playing the game in the city teaches you to be tough. You got competition. There's someone always ready to take your spot. And I think part of that makes the pressure on the athlete to say, I have really got to perform. To represent a city that you hold so honorable to your life, to your character, to who you are, that's an honor. That's the New York State of mind. My mother, she got mad and said, why didn't you tell me you was going to New York? I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. As soon as I hung up the phone, they called me and said the trade went through. So I had to call them like, yo, we, we headed to New York. The only thing she said was, are you ready? I was like, you know, I, I, I don't have a choice. You know, when you grow up in, in a place like Brooklyn in the, in the, in the city, you, you develop a toughness. Red Hook was an exciting place when we was living there. And when I moved there, I didn't realize it was the way it was, but it wasn't all bad. It had a good moments also. Red Hook is like an island by itself. It's not a small housing project. It's one of the largest in New York City. This neighborhood taught me everything. Everything that you see bad is really not that bad. Um, I didn't know how much I was lacking in, in, in a lot of things until I left this neighborhood. Because when I was in this neighborhood, regardless of who you were, what you had and what you didn't have, you were still considered a, a friend, a brother. You didn't know you was poor when you lived out here. You didn't know you was a, a lower class individual. Not by choice, make it right. This is the court. This is the court where Melo first shot his basketball to official 10 feet regulated hoop, right here. This was the apartment that we lived in. This was the window he used to stick his head out of all the time when he couldn't come outside. This was the window. And this was the court. This was the court. This is where he started at. This was where he started playing basketball four, five, six, seven, eight years old. We had like a, it was like a summer game and my, my oldest brother was playing. So I got in trouble. I had to sit and watch it through, you know, through my window. You would see his little head in the window. Everybody knew that's Melo. But I couldn't reach the window, so I like stacked, you know, chairs and tables on top of each other. And it fell, you know, caught myself right here in the corner of my eye. I tried to hide it though. Every time my mother came home, I was trying to act like I was asleep. My mother would sit at the table and eat, and the bowl would be right beside him. And I would notice. He had something in the bed with him, and it was a basketball. Sleep the ball in his bed, yeah. <laughs> always had a, always had a ball in my hand, though. Yeah. Always. When you think of New York basketball, you don't think of run and gun. You don't think of jacking up a lot of three-pointers. You don't think of that kind of game. Being competitive and playing with guys older, I started seeing my brother bang bodies, contact, took basketball, made it a contact sport. I started seeing my brother enjoying contact. Playing the game in the city teaches you to be tough. So, you know, I brought a toughness, uh, and also I brought a mindset where I was very focused. I would sit down in, in my locker, and I would just bow my head and close my eyes. And give you my game face. <laughs> New York is hardcore. New York's the concrete jungle. To say you from Brooklyn really means something, but to say you from Red Hook, you know, that, that stands for a lot. Melo being from Red Hook, being from New York, you know, and for us to have a superstar, there was no other player that we would have wanted. You know, and, and actually looking back at, at people right now that live in Red Hook, people that I've grown up with, and to sit with them and have stories and talk about it, like just all the memories, and I sit back like, why, you know, why am I the one that really made it out? And how, you know, how did I do that? You know, I, I try to, you know, gather them thoughts and think about that all the time. Uh, you know, I'm, Red Hook, you, it's, it's nobody really claiming Red Hook. You know, so I'm, I'm like the only person.
I love the bright lights, big city. I love the, the grittiness of it. I love the, the realness, the authenticity of it. I couldn't imagine growing up nowhere else. I could see Manhattan from where we lived, and it just felt grand, it felt big. It felt um, like the best place in the world to be. The most famous stage with the brightest lights, with the loudest applause, with the largest audience. Like you can feel that energy, you can feel that emotion. <laughs> Dog makes you a better player. Yeah, and then a better person. Off the court, he goes with the rhythm of the city. New York um, has rubbed off on Melo in a really, you know, really big way. You see the change. I tapped into everything, whether it was, you know, sports, whether it was fashion, whether it's art. You know, I never wanted to wear a suit, never wanted to dress up. You know, it was always jeans, sneakers, t-shirts, hats. So when I began my, you know, NBA career, I wore a suit to every single game. <laughs> so I don't want to say it, but I was part of one of the reasons that they actually changed the NBA dress code. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fashion capital of the world, so it's natural. You want to dress. You want to put on clothes. You want to be dope. You want to be fly. Especially being here in New York, like the, the fashion sense that people Absolutely. have. Absolutely. He looks great in a suit now, and it's like, yay! <laughs> here or you could be broken here. For me, I like challenges. Carmelo likes challenges. We don't want it the easy way. If your goal in life is to be the best of the best of the best, it's on you. What do you want to do with it? To come here and think you're just going to play and do the same things you did in a smaller market, it, it's, 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 you're misguided. You know, once that day is over with, it's on to the next. And that's just, that's just New York. You know, you, you're only as good as that last play or your last game. Last year, the media ragged my brother, man. And we spoke, sent a text every day, back and forth. And I told him, it's going to be all right. If you can weather the storm, you're going to be all right. What I'm so grateful for is that he's strong enough to accept that. And we've seen stars come in here, and, and they'll say, you know, if you don't like it too bad, this is who I am. And, and what I liked about Carmelo, he listened, and he said, yeah, you know what? They're right. I need to be better. You know, the thing about the fans here in New York, they appreciate the rebound, they appreciate the pass. They appreciate the little things They appreciate things the defense. Absolutely, yeah. they appreciate the little things. And it was, you know, it was one play this year, and it was just like the ball was loose, and I just, I ain't had no chance of saving the <laughs> ball. So I just jumped in the crowd, boom, and just, you know, trying to save the ball. He's hit some huge shots, but him diving into the front row, that was probably the biggest cheer he's ever gotten as a Nick. You know, I think that's when they really, the fans up here really started to say like, okay, Melo, Melo gets it. To come back and play for New York and, and do what he's doing, I mean, you can tell the way he's playing, that he's got that I'm home feeling. You want to give your very, very best performance, and that's what it is, it's really a performance. It's showtime, like it's, it's, it's time to go. I mean, you, you, you're representing a bigger cause. You're not just representing yourself, you're not just representing the Knicks, you're representing New York. It's, it's nothing better than that. You know, I used to put the hangers, like, take the iron hangers and make them into a hoop. You know, fold the top of the hanger, the hook of the hanger, put it on the wall and tape it, and that'll be my goal. Ball the socks up, wrap the socks in tape, make it, you know, make it real hard. And that was my ball. I don't think in his wildest dreams he ever thought, um, as an eight-year-old kid, I'm gonna one day play in the NBA and then I'm gonna play for the Knicks. He's playing for his father's and his mother's favorite team before he was even born. You know, when I put on that Nick uniform, it really transforms you. This is your home. This is where you grew up at. This is something special. When I still walk into the garden and in the locker room and just, you know, you seeing the Knicks logo, see my, my jersey hanging up, see my sneakers, I see my headband just laying there. And it's like, somebody pinch me. Let me know that it's real. He plays like New York. He's where he's supposed to be. This is it. Yeah, no, how special is it playing in front of the fans at the garden? You know, I, I think they're the greatest fans in the world. There's nothing like Running that. along that left-hand side of the floor. I mean, you're you right hear there. the roar of the crowd. <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you, you're right there on the sideline. That's where the, you know, that's where the fans, that, that's, 
everybody's on your back and you know when you're facing that sideline it's, you feel like that's your time where you have Madison Square Garden on your back and, right. and at the end of the day you're in the belly of the beast. The thing about performing here is like, you know, if performing almost for your family is one of their own on the stage. They understand you, you know, we grew up together. You have to be able to embrace the intensity of these fans. You almost have to understand their intensity. The fact that they want it so bad that a middle of the week January loss will drive them crazy and they don't want to hear the excuses that it was your sixth game in seven days and a third back to back. They don't want to hear it. The excitement was overwhelming when I first saw him play in Madison Square Garden in his first game. Definitely got, got chill, definitely got butterflies and you know, to run out there on that court. When he came out on the floor and the building literally shook, the floor was actually shaking. It's like you found something you love to do and you can make a living doing it. It just makes you just more free and liberated and expressive and creative. If you love the game or you love the sport, then you're going to play your best. And your passion speaks for itself as well as your skill. That drive, the type of drive you're talking about, that drive is in certain people. That drive doesn't exist in everyone. People with that real drive, they're going to surprise you all the time. Because just when you thought that you seen their best, you ain't seen nothing yet. My most important thing is just uh, the opportunities. Being able to run out there on the basketball court and represent New York. It's like when you, you go anywhere in the world and you know you, you have a New York Knicks shirt on, you represent New York. Uh, there's so much that comes along with that. And you know, why not want to be the, the face of that? Winning in New York, especially when you haven't won in a long time, especially a, a, a historic team like the Knicks. There are people that have covered sports in this city way longer than I have, and they can't put words to it, what it would mean. Nothing, nothing will compare to if and when the Knicks win a championship. You know, everybody dreams about winning a championship, but when you do it here in New York, there's, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I mean, you can win any, in any other city, any other place, but to win here in New York, there's nothing like it.